Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Lloyd, Kentucky. For this My Town TV presentation of Greenup County Musketeer Basketball. Tonight, the Greenup County Musketeers welcome to the greenhouse the Chillicothe Cavaliers from up US 23. Cavaliers come into tonight's game with a record of one and three, coming off their first win of the season last night against McLean. Greenup County uh, played last night as well. Had another close loss. Greenup County comes into this game with a record of four and five. five. All five of the Greenup losses have been by single digits this year, and last night was no different across the river in Ohio at Wheelersburg, where the Wheelersburg Pirates came away with a 52-50 victory over your Greenup County Musketeers. We're about 14 minutes away from tip-off here at the greenhouse tonight. Should be a good one. We look forward to it. Happy to have you along with us. We'll be right back here in just a moment here on My Town with an interview with Coach Corey Allison. I've been a member for a little over 46 years. They're very family oriented. Um, you just walk in and everybody's friendly. They talk to you, you know, they know you by name. You know, you may not go in there for a day or, you know, several years and I think you go in there and you still feel like family. Recently, we refinanced our home and it felt like it was right because we trust the people that work there. This is my people. the deals don't stop. Buy one, get one half off Wing Tuesdays. Buy one, get one free bonus Thursdays. And three to six dollar happy hour deals from three to six p.m. every weekday. Only at Buffalo Wild Wings. struggle to concentrate. You don't understand why your mood swings and your energy is down. You're asking yourself why you have feelings of guilt, worthlessness, or even suicidal thoughts. Your mind is screaming, help. Pathways is listening. Call or chat with our crisis helpline now at pathways-ky.org. We are here with Coach Corey Allison of the Greenup County Musketeers. Uh, right before the Musketeers are headed into this home game tonight against the Chillicothe Cavaliers, coming in with a one and three record. Uh, Greenup County coming off a tough loss last night over at Wheelersburg, where uh, we wound up losing 52 to 50. Uh, had a shot at the buzzer to try to win, didn't fall. Um, what are your thoughts on the game last night? First, over at Wheelersburg, a tough place to play. Um. It's a big, big letdown, and um, and I put that on myself. You know, um, um, we've got uh, we got to shake some things up. I mean, we got some guys are getting too comfortable. Um, we we're not taking pride in playing defense and stopping the other team, um, and we're still in games. You know, and, and that's yeah. what I'm telling these guys, yeah. you know, on the flip side, you know, to be optimistic, like, hey, look, as bad as we play, we, we're still in these games. Mm -hmm. So that means, hey, you know, we're finding ways to lose, guys. So now we need to, you know, find ways not to lose, be more cautious, you know, um, and just be confident in what the games that we've been through, like, you know, mm -hmm. I'm letting them know, like, don't let these, ball, these ball games that we've played the last eight games just go in vain. Like, we need to be learning and growing from every game. But my thing is, you know, we continue to have this relapse um, mm -hmm. or this basketball trauma and, mm -hmm. you know, just doing uncharacteristic things, you know, um, on the court. So 
don't know if it's nerves or whatever the case might be, or just afraid to be great. Mm -hmm. um, but they're going through some things, mm -hmm. and um, and hopefully we can weather the storm. And it's my job to to make sure that they, um, you know, that they get through it. Well, you have a good uh, schedule set up, I think. Uh, this week, you know, we have Chillicothe here at home tonight to try to get back to 500, uh, five and five record. And then uh, we go on the road Saturday, or, uh, Friday night to Estill County to play the first round of the 2A tournament. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can keep that going and have the good tournament uh, environment to get to play in the 2A tournament uh, deep into it. And that doesn't resume until January. And then uh, Saturday, of course, here home against Rock Hill. So at the end of this week, you know, I mean, we, we have this week and then we have a 12-day break until you all head to South Carolina. What are you hoping the team looks like and the attitude of the team? What can we see out of them in these next three games that uh, you'd be happy with this week? Oh, that's a good question, you know, and I wish I had a crystal ball, you know, <laughs> or I wish I had some mojo where I can sprinkle on guys during the game. And you sometimes you just feel so helpless, you know. Mm. Um, I'm expecting to see some growth. Um, like I said, it's going to yeah. be up to us coaches to shake things up mm -hmm. and maybe get some guys' attention yeah. um, and let them know how serious we are in regards to, you know, making this breakthrough. I mean, yeah. we're right there. Yeah, um, it's, last it's, year. Evident. it's evident you're right there because uh, every loss has been by single digits. And, you know, at the end of this week, we'll be 12 games through the season, so more than a third of the way through the season. Yeah, yeah. And I had to slow myself down and kind of smell the roses and say, hey, well, up until yesterday was my first time as a green, you know, green up, uh, head coach here at Greenup that mm -hmm. I was 500. Mm -hmm. You know, last year we were one and forever. Um, there yeah. was no way you could dig yourself out of that hole. Yeah. Um, but we did have a good second part of the season. Um, I'm trying to get the guys to reflect back to that and that moment and um, and grasp hold of that that yeah. momentum. And um, yeah. I thought we were doing pretty good at first, but I, but even through the first eight nine games and we were playing good and but I was just defensively I still wasn't comfortable you mm -hmm. know it was just know, still something yeah. yeah it was still something yeah. I was like guys come yeah. on you know um yeah. you know so it's just about them getting over themselves mm -hmm. me trying to get them as comfortable as possible mm -hmm. um and um I think we're right there like I said mm -hmm. we, we just got to continue to keep chucking at the biz they say yeah. you know <laughs> Well, we'll look forward to watching you keep chucking at the bit. Uh, we got Chillicothe here tonight. Uh, what, what exactly do you know about Chillicothe? I know they're a young team. They're one and three coming into the game tonight. They did get their first win last night over McLean. Yeah, a young team, but um, they have um, some guys that, that, are, that are ball players. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they're gamers. Mm -hmm. um, and that is something that we've been kind of lacking mentally, you mm -hmm. know, being a gamer down the stretch, you mm -hmm. know. And um, um, I don't know too much about them. I have some film. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I play – me and Coach Gammon, um, their head coach is a, a teammate of ours from Shawnee State. Oh, okay. Uh, Pat Beard. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I know his, you know uh, – his identity as a ball player, you know, mm -hmm. he was tough, you know, mm -hmm. um, physical player. And I know what he, you know, what he expects out of his players. So yeah. um, I know that they're going to be fighting, mm -hmm. you know, they're going to fight to the end. And, and this is all learned. This is, this is, you know, it's a plus for them. I mean, they, they, it's yeah. a win-win for them to have, oh, you know, yeah. play against us and to mm -hmm. come this far. And, and um, mm -hmm. so we need to make sure that we give them something that they can learn from. Well, that sounds good. I hope you do. I guess if nothing else, you, Coach Gammon, and uh, Coach Beard can suit up yourselves and uh, beat everybody on the floor, right? Yeah, I'm with, <laughs> yes. <laughs> let me in, Coach. Let me, let me put, check myself in for a few free throws or something because, you know, like, and, like I said, we, we just need to get over ourselves yeah. and, and, and bless these kids' heart. You yeah. know, they, they, they've been through a lot basketball-wise. Um, mm -hmm. And... It took them a long time to get how they are, so it's going to take a minute for them to get how yeah. we want them to be. Yeah. Well, we're right there on the verge, it seems to me, of breaking through. And uh, look forward to seeing us break through as the season goes along. And uh, good luck out there tonight against Chillicothe. Hey, I appreciate you guys' support. All right. Thank you, Coach. Better banking brings better opportunity. If you're looking for a loan, I encourage you to shop local. At Kentucky Farmers Bank, we make our decisions right here in our office. We give you the loans that you need and the personal service that you deserve. Kentucky Farmers Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. We take pride in our schools 
And at King's Daughters, we take pride in being part of the team. With student-athlete care from the sidelines to our comprehensive orthopedics program. With walk-in hours in Ashland and Portsmouth that make seeing a provider easier than ever. Our team is delivering faster diagnosis and treatment, getting our student-athletes back in the game and back to what they do best. Orthopedics at King's Daughters. Alex Jewelers, in this uh, school season, we want to wish all of our local teams the, the best. We want you to know that we're here for you in any of your gift giving needs. And uh, good luck to everyone this fall and next spring. back here at the Greenhouse in Lloyd, Kentucky on My Town TV where the Greenwich County Musketeers are getting set to play host to the Chillicothe Cavaliers. Greenup County comes into the game with a record of four and five, Chillicothe a record of one and three. Interesting fact here early, uh, Greenup County coach Corey Allison played ball in college with Chillicothe coach Pat Beard and as well as Greenup County assistant coach, uh, Jason Gammon. So uh, I told him in the pregame interview there they could have a three-on-three -three team to probably take all everybody out here, everybody in the gym. Who knows? I tell you what, that's a good point there. Those, those guys, they all look like they play right now. Yep, and uh, that, you hear the, the tones there of Brian Barber back on the air with me tonight. Uh, I'm Ryan Parker, happy to be here with the uh, Brian again after missing last night. To, yep, had fight. you been there, we would have won. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I gotta fight. I'm fighting this daggone boy, so I almost lost it. So bear with me tonight. It may go in and out, a little bit squeaky at times, but I'll try to do the best I can here. Luckily, I'm bringing, doing the color, so it shouldn't be too bad. Yeah, I'm glad to have you back tonight as uh, we went over to Wheelersburg last night, suffered a, another heartbreaking defeat, another single-digit loss. You know, we've I lost know. five games, all five by single digits. <laughs> Yeah, that's a game when I thought we, you know, we may come back and win that one. It just, again, just heartbreak. These cardiac kids, man, I tell you what, they they, they, they battled to the very end. i got to give them credit. Yeah, we never quit. We were down nine points at halftime last night. Came all the way back to have a shot to win it at the buzzer. Right. And uh, Underwood's three-pointer just went off the back iron right at the buzzer. That's all you can ask for, a chance to win it. And they, they were right there last night, as, as they seem to be every game nowadays. Chillicothe comes into the game, uh, winning their first game of the season last night. They beat McLean, a team from uh, Central Ohio there. Uh, Chillicothe had well, they lost the three games before that, so they're 1-3. They're and three. They're a very young team coming into tonight's game, uh, but uh, Coach Beard speaks very highly of their potential. Yeah, they're kind of a young team, and they play in the Frontier Conference, which is uh, pretty tough. They play alongside you know, teams like Jackson and I'm not sure. I, mean, I, could, I had some of these other teams written down, but again, it's it's not it's not a big conference, but it's a tough conference they play in. So, you know, they're they're going to be tested somewhat. One and three coming in. Green County, we know at four and five is really well tested. They're ready. They're ready. To, they're trying to bid to get out of here tonight. Yeah, looking forward to seeing some progress from the Musketeers throughout the rest of this week. At the end of this week, we will have been through 12 games of the season, which is over a third of the season. It's incredible. Yeah, it is. Uh, time's flying by here. A basketball season. Is going by, but Greenup County will have a 12-day break after this Saturday before they head to South Carolina for a three-game event. Yeah, that'd be interesting. A much needed break coming up for these guys. I'm sure right now they, of course, they're battle tested right now. Their legs, their legs are a lot younger than ours, but I'm, I'm sure they're tired. We uh, look like we're preparing for the national anthem. So uh, Grant, if we'll take one more break here while the national anthem is played, we'll be right back with the starting lineups and the tip-off of this one from the Greenhouse on My Town TV.
It's tailgate time in the bluegrass. Uncle, Uncle Rick, Rick, what are you doing? doing? I'm getting ready to make my announcing debut. And I believe that's football time in the bluegrass. But you can believe this. Clark's has everything you need for a winning tailgate. Whether it's ice and cold drinks, chips and dips, or homemade sandwiches, and crispy, crunchy chicken for everybody, Clark's has you covered. And you don't even have to leave your car thanks to our convenient drive through Clark's Pump and Shop. Return. Refresh. Refuel. Visit the Ashland Boyd County Health Department to catch up on routine childhood vaccines such as MMR, Tdap, HPV, and hepatitis. Please call 606-324-7181 to schedule an appointment. Stand under the mistletoe. Put presents under the tree. But if you drive under the influence, you could end up under arrest. Drive sober or get pulled over. I felt like I didn't matter at my past job and Regroup helps me to feel like I am important and that I have meaning and purpose. If you really want to feel like you are important um, and feel like you want a home, um, some place that you can talk to anybody about anything, I think Regroup is the place for you to work. Like we're a team and we're a family and I feel just like I'm welcomed here and I'm loved here and I feel like I matter here. back here at Greenup County High School as the starting lineups are about to be announced. Chilla Coffey's starting lineup. Juan Miller, number three, he's a junior, 5'10", he's the point guard. Number 12, Dom Barron, a junior, will be starting tonight as well. Number 13, Cooper Stone King, he's a sophomore, 6'2", led Chillicothe in scoring in game one this year. Number 23, Cameron Badger, a junior. And number 24, a freshman, Caden Cox. He's six foot three. Good size, good looking kid, six three freshman. We'll see how he does tonight, only freshman. Young Chillicothe team. Now for the Musketeers. Coach Corey Gammon, or uh, not Corey Gammon, Corey Allison hinted at some changes in the starting lineup tonight, so we'll see who he sends out to start for the Musketeers. Bradley Atkins, the sophomore guard, still starting tonight for the Musketeers. AC Gammon, the sophomore point guard. Six foot three, Gavin Harrington getting his first start of the season, a junior. Bryson Chanley, another junior, six foot three. Ethan Gibson starting tonight, getting his first start for the Musketeers. I saw Ethan put in his volleyball line three right before he went to the bench. That's becoming a tradition here at the greenhouse. Yeah. He's kind of like Steph Curry yeah, sure shooting is. that thing from the, yeah. the hallway. <laughs> yeah, interesting enough, we'll have somebody, and, and somebody new jumping at center tonight for the opening tip off. Eli, of course, Eli Atkins has done a heck of a job tipping off opening tips. Chanley will do it tonight, it looks like. Bryson Chanley will be jumping center against uh, number 24, Caden Cox. Both players stand at six foot three. And here we go. Greenup County wins the tip in the backcourt, but uh, Chillicothe comes up with it, and Cooper Stone King takes it right to the goal for a basket. Two to nothing, Chillicothe. Stone King, he's got that scorer's mentality. You can see right there from the opening tip. He took it and went right to the rack. Here's Gammon out front for the Musketeers. Man-to-man -man defense from Chillicothe. Gives it to Gibson, top of the key. Puts down a couple dribbles. Looking, looking. Gets it to Harrington in the corner. Out to Casey Gammon. 
Gammon pulls up, takes a 15-footer, and he's got it. More and more confident, that kid. More and more confident. Look out. There's Juan Miller for Chillicothe out top to Stone King on the left side. Stone King drives the paint, kicks it out to Badger. Badger goes out top to Cox, and he drives in and gets that shot batted out of bounds by Bryson Chanley, but the foul's going to go against uh, number one, Casey Gammon, it looked like. 7.08 left here in the first period, just underway from the greenhouse. Two twos are score. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they called it on Gammon. Hayden Cox, left-hander, goes to the line, puts the first one off the front, no good. Yeah, that was ugly. Way short there. Second try from Cox is too long, but Chillicothe comes down with the board. That was Badger retrieving the board. To get it to the post. It's taken away by Bryson Chanley. Here he comes on the run. Chanley gets it to Bradley Atkins, lays it up, and that one's swatted out of bounds by Caden Cox. Two big rejections early here. Big blocks. The Greenups basketball underneath their own basket. Gibson gets it into Chanley, out to Gammon. Gammon on the dribble, way out front. Setting up the offense, gives it to Ethan Gibson. Looking for room. Back to Gammon. Gammon might have walked with it, got away with it. Puts it off the back iron, no good. Rebound to Juan Miller. He gets it ahead to Cox, and here comes Chillicothe. Cox tried to rear back and fire one down low, finding Stone King, but it went through his hands and out of bounds. It's two turnovers now on Chillicothe. Zero turnovers for Graham County so far this young game. Here's Casey Gammon up the four for the Musketeers. 2-2. Two -two. Gammon gives it off to Bradley Atkins. Atkins to Chanley. Chanley pulls up from 15 feet. No good off the back iron. Rebound. Strong rebound down to Dom Barron. Ahead he goes to number 23, Cameron Badger, and he picks up a foul. That was going to be on Bryson Chanley. His first. A little touchy foul there, but I guess he got him. Two fouls on Graham County. First one, money. It's Cameron Badger puts Chillicothe on top, three to two. Badger a junior. Second one's perfect, four to two. Chillicothe in the lead. And they're two of four from the line tonight. Graham County yet to shoot. There's Gammon again out top for the Musketeers. Gives it over to Bradley Atkins on the right side. Atkins crossover dribble. That might have gone off his foot. Nope, they say it went off the foot of Cooper Stone King. We'll take that one. Might have got a break there as Coach Pat Beard stood right in front of that one. Nothing easy right here. Ethan Gibson going to bring the ball in for the Musketeers. Out top to Bradley Atkins. Adkins to Gibson. He'll pull the trigger from three. No good. Rebound. Tipped around. Chanley comes out of there with it. Great athleticism for Bryson Chanley. Throws it up. Misses everything, though. Rebound down to Dom Barron. Well, the ball came out of his hand or just was knocked out of his hand or what? Walk. Oh, charge. A push off there. On Juan Miller, number three, gets the foul call. Five minutes, 34 seconds left here in the first quarter. Here comes Casey Gammon. Drives the paint, throws it up, no good. Rebound to Stone King. Here comes Stone King. Up ahead to Badger, and he loses the ball, went out of bounds. Going to be Greenup County's basketball. We'll take it. That's four turnovers now for Jill Coffee on the road, but yet they're winning this thing 4-2. to two. Graham County needs to get a score right here. Musketeers have come out looking a little bit lackluster offensively so far. Mm -hmm. Bradley Atkins out top to Casey Gammon. Left side to Harrington. Underneath to Bradley Atkins. Atkins gives it to Harrington in the paint. Throws it up. 
No good. Chanley rebounds. Chanley puts it on the floor. Didn't really need to. I believe that Badger reached in and got the foul. And it's on the ground. Yep, it's on Barron. Dom Barron is who the foul was on. Okay. 4-2, Chillicothe. Gibson going to inbound it from underneath the Greenup County basket. Out top to Casey Gammon. Get to Chanley. Out to Gibson, left side, three-pointer, no good. Rebound down to Chanley again. Nope, it's pulled down, it's a scrum for it, and Barron picks it up, and here comes Chillicothe. One Miller, beautiful pass of the length of the floor to Cox. He misses the layup. Rebound down to Stone King. He gets it back out to Badger. Badger out to Cox. Cox puts down a couple dribbles, spins through the lane, up and in. Uh, Graham County's got to tighten that defense down. They've got to get back on transition better, too. That was a uh, not very good transition defense right there. 6-2, Chillicothe on top early here from the greenhouse. Casey Gammon picks up his dribble out front. Nobody to throw to. They're covering up all the options. He gets to Bryson Chanley, who puts down a dribble, he goes through the lane, gets fouled, and uh, he'll go to the line for two shots. Yeah, good move right there. I believe the foul was called against Badger. I was trying to see the ref. I can't see the second number. Third foul on Chillicothe. Bryson Chanley will go to the line for two free throws. Greenup trailing six to two early in this one. The first free throw is off the back iron. No good. Eli Atkins sets at the scorer's table, ready to check in. He's going to check in for the shooter, Bryson Chanley. Chanley puts his dribbles down, looks towards the basket, and uh, misses this one off the front iron. Cox rebounds, and here comes Chillicothe with a 6-2 lead. Juan Miller handling the point guard duties. Miller goes right side to Badger. Now top to Stone King. To the right side to Caden Cox. Cox out top to Badger. Puts down a good left-handed drive. Gets it to Barron. He'll take a 10-footer. No good. Rebound down to Chanley. And a foul is going to be called once again. That one's going to go against number 23, Cameron Badger. He got tangled up there with Harrington. I'm not sure. What happened there? Over the back, probably. Eli Atkins going to check into the game for Ethan Gibson. Musketeers down 6-2, to two, only been able to generate two points so far in uh, about the first four and a half minutes of basketball. Right, that's, that's got to improve. I, I think that will. I think we'll get, get it going here in just a minute. Here comes Atkins over the timeline. Gets it into the left corner to Harrington, out top to Gammon. Gammon behind the back dribble, loses control, turns it over. Good pass ahead out in front of Juan Miller as he goes up and misses the layup. But we got a foul call. Let's see where the referee's going to go with this one. You got it right, Brian. Gavin Harrington. Yeah, badge. That was a heads up pass, too. As soon as he got that ball was turned over, boom, that pass was on the way. Here comes Cohen Underwood into the game for Casey Gammon. Juan Miller going to inbound the basketball from underneath the Chillicothe basket. Gets it into Stone King. He'll take a 10-footer on the baseline. Air ball. Rebound down, down to Cohen Underwood, and here comes the Musketeers. Trailing 6-2. Underwood out top to Chanley. Inup County just not, not really attacking yet. Right, right. They're moving a little better without the ball this possession. Adkins out front to Chanley, gets it down to Underwood. Underwood, good pass back to Chanley, goes up and gets fouled, and Chanley will go to the line for two free throws again. That foul is signaled on number three, Juan Miller. That's his second. Hey, number two on him, that's right, or fourth, fifth. And Greenham County will be shooting two free throws on every foul from here on out. Chanley's first free throw is good. 
Nothing but nine on that baby. Checking into the game for Chillicothe to replace Juan Miller, who sets with two fouls, is junior Jackson McNeil, number 11. Also into the game down there, Daniel Sism, a junior number 35. Chanley's second free throw is good. Six to four, Chillicothe in the lead, 240 remaining here in the first quarter. Ball almost tipped away by Eli Atkins. It's uh, tipped out of bounds, though, by Caden Eblen in the game as well for Chillicothe. So they are substituting liberally. They turn the ball over, though, Greenup's ball. Yeah, you wonder sometimes, you know, get those subs in. You kind of want to see what this group's going to do, how they gel together, and it's still early in the season. That's probably what they're doing right now. Harrington drives the baseline. Good drive by Gavin Harrington. Cannot convert, though. Goes off of Chillicothe out of bounds. It'll be Greenup County's basketball. Yeah, that's a good move right there. He's a little too far into the basket. Yeah, good strong move driving the baseline by Harrington. Really haven't seen him do that this season yet. That was the first time I'd seen him execute that move. I'd like to see a little more of that from Harrington. Yeah. Underwood to Chanley, 15-footer, no good. Rebound down to Caden Cox, and here comes Chillicothe. Cox is open out there. Not sure if he likes that three. He'll take a 15-footer instead, and it's in. Pretty shot. Give him four points now for the night. Eight to four, Chillicothe on top. Two minutes left here in the first quarter from the greenhouse. Eli Adkins out to Bryson Chanley. To Bradley Adkins on the right side. He tries to drive the baseline. Does drive the baseline. Throws up a reverse. Chanley tries it. No good. Rebound down. Uh, torn out of there. Underwood hustling for it. Can't quite get it. Caden Cox has it. Man, he was battling in there. Ooh. Cox with the ball out front for Chillicothe. In command early in this one, eight to four. Long three by Stone King, no good. Tipped up, no good. Rebound down to Eli Atkins. And here come the Musketeers. To Bryson Chanley, left side, loses control of it. Chanley, being guarded by Stone King, picks up his dribble way out front. Looking, looking, finds Eli Atkins through the lane. Ten footer, no good. Rebound down to Underwood. Underwood just tore it away from everybody underneath there. Chillicothe had position, and Pat Beard is crying out for the over-the-back call, but he didn't get it that time as uh, Underwood just tore the ball away, and uh, the foul was called on Chillicothe. Tore the ball away. I like that. He ripped it away. He did. <laughs> it was my ball. Another missed free throw for the Musketeers. They are uh, two of five there so far on the night. I know that was another one of the areas that uh, Coach Corey Allison said in the pregame interview he'd like to see improve. Second free throw from Underwood is in. Eight to five, Chillicothe leads. Well, free throws have probably cost them two games this season. They've got a few better for sure. Stone King with it on the far side, gives it over to Eblen down low. Good job getting the ball to Sism for two points. Daniel Sism. 10 5. Chillicothe in front. They've doubled up green up early. Gamming out top to Eli Adkins. Adkins takes a 15 footer. It's That's good. Yep. Need to see a whole lot more of that from Eli Adkins. Yeah, I agree. I agree. <laughs> 28 seconds, Caden Cox dribbling the ball way out front, being guarded by Bradley Adkins. Not sure if Chillicothe will try to hold it and go for one here. There's Ooh. a walk and a half. He got away with that one. Out front on Jackson McNeil, he did get away with it. There's Stone King on the left side. He's driving like he doesn't want to go for one shot. Gives it in the corner to Cox. Stone King puts it up from three-point land, no good. Five seconds, Eli Adkins, three, two, one, Underwood puts a dribble down, puts another dribble down, and oh, this is the three-pointer at the buzzer. So after one quarter of play here from the greenhouse, it's Chillicothe 10, Greenup County 7. Thank you for joining us here tonight on My Town TV. Whether it's a breakfast sandwich or pizza on the way to the track, picking up drinks and crispy crunchy chicken on the way to the game, or a late-night snack on the way home, no one has you covered like Clark's Pump and Shop. Quartz Pump and Shop. Return. Refresh. Refuel. Visit the Ashland Boyd County Health Department to catch up on routine childhood vaccines, such as MMR, Tdap, 
HPV, and hepatitis. Please call 606-324-7181 to schedule an appointment. wings the deals don't stop buy one get one half off wing tuesdays buy one get one free boneless thursdays and three to six dollar happy hour deals from three to six p.m every weekday only at buffalo wild wings we're back here at lloyd kentucky chillicothe leading greenup county 10 to 7 after one quarter yeah interesting note here it's uh Green County trails by three, but they have only had one turnover in the first quarter. Meanwhile, took all they had five. Musketeers need to convert off those turnovers. Underwood on the block. Good pass back to Eli. Atkins misses the layup. Rebound down to Caden Cox. They got to make those. I can't believe he missed that. Cox gets it to Stone King on the back door. He drives and gets fouled, and Stone King will go to the line for two shots. That foul goes against Casey Gamm in his second of the night. Nice quick cut there by Stone King. The team's traded backdoor cuts on the first possession. Yep. Stone King's free throw is no good. There are two is five as well so far. Yeah, both teams having some trouble putting the ball in the hole here early tonight. Casey Gammon goes to the bench with two fouls. Stone King's second free throw is no good. Rebound to Bradley Adkins. Here come the Musketeers again. Down 10-7. Adkins out front to Cohen Underwood. Underwood to Eli Adkins on the left side. Looking inside, gets it to Chanley. Chanley puts down a couple dribbles, goes up, and is fouled by Daniel Sism. Sism got his hands up. Not me, not me. I believe the foul is uh, not on the shot. They're going to give it to Greenup County underneath their own basket. Ethan Gibson will do the inbounding duties. Gets it into Underwood. Puts a dribble down, working on Sism. He's good move go. by Underwood. Nice. Just kept working him right there. That's the experience that Underwood brings. There's Stone King out top for Chillicothe. Number 15 into the game, that's Andrew Hammond. Another new player into the game for Chillicothe. To Sism on the baseline. Sism working on Underwood. Finds Hammond, puts it up, and in. Oh, I'm sorry, that was Caden Eblen. That was number 10 who put that in. Good job by Caden Eblen. 12 to nine, Chillicothe leads. There's Chanley with it on the post. Again, goes up strong, lays it in. This is first two of the night. Five players have scored on each team. Interesting. It is interesting. Uh, we've seen a lot of individual great performances here at the greenhouse this year. But uh, some team ball being played so far. Three-pointer in the corner is off the mark by Eblen. Here comes Bradley Atkins for the Musketeers. Now front to Chanley. Greenup County, uh, well, they throw the ball away. I was going to say looking for their first lead, but they throw the ball away. Sism comes up with it. There's Hammond with the basketball. Out to Stone King. He likes the three-pointer. He likes that one a lot as he puts it in. It's his first one of the game. That's the game's first three-pointer. 15 to 11. Chillicothe back out to a four-point lead. There's Eli Atkins, 10-footer. No good. Rebound down. To number 24, Caden Cox. And here comes Cox for the Cavaliers. Now to Stone King. Stone King working on Adkins. Takes a 15-footer. Good shot by oh. Cooper Stone King. What a quick release. My goodness. Short release. Interesting. 17-11. Chillicothe out to a six-point lead now. Tipped away again. Another turnover. As Greenup County gets a break here, they're going to call a holding foul on Cooper Stone King. Wow. Yeah, they got a break there for sure. Yeah, they had thrown the ball away as Chillicothe had gotten their hands on it, deflected the pass, and Chillicothe had stolen the 
basketball, but a foul on Cooper Stone King. Negates the turnover, and Greenup County will inbound it underneath their own basket. Gibson gives it over to R.J. Veach in the game for the first time tonight. Eli Adkins puts it up, no good. Rebound down to Caden Cox. Greenup County needs some energy from somebody. Maybe R.J. Veach can bring it tonight. Yeah, you're right. They're, they're missing something. They need a spark. I thought Eli Atkins might do that, but. There's Cox through the lane, fall away 10-footer. Good shot by Caden Cox. That's six points. I tell you what, he's, he's had a heck of a game. Here's Underwood out front for the Musketeers. Looks down a dribble, spins through the lane, goes up strong and lays it in. Good job by Cohen Underwood. 19-13. Needed that. This is much the way it was last night, Brian. Uh, you know, just uh, lack of energy, it seemed like, on the floor. You just can't put your finger on it. What's missing? Stone King for two again. Cooper Stone King starting to take over here for, for uh, Chillicothe. Yep, nine points. Underwood thought about pulling the trigger for the three. Down to Gibson on the low post. Ethan Gibson goes up, misses, rebound down to Dom Barron. He throws it ahead to, well, good pass over from Eblen to number 24. That's Caden Cox for another two. It's a 23 to 13 lead as Chillicothe's open up a 10 point lead on the Musketeers. And uh, it's a uh, timeout on the floor. It's a 30 second timeout. We'll stay right here. Yeah, 10 point lead. I mean, just like that, you know, it was a three point deficit at the end of the first quarter. Now you're looking at a 10 point deficit. They've outscored us seven points in the second quarter. And like you said, a little bit lackluster. We need that spark right now. Uh, I still think Graham Kynes would come back and win this game. I really do. I've got that just good, good, good feeling. But, again, they got they can't let this thing get out of hand too early. No, we haven't seen Greenup County fade away completely in any game all throughout the season. But uh, there were times in last night's game against Wheelersburg where it kind of looked similar to this. So it just looked like we – didn't right. really, uh, I just yeah. don't, don't really know what we're wanting to do on offense. Right. Kind it's, of like you're, yeah, it's almost like you're a step slow. They got to get you know, yeah. energized. And maybe that'd be RJ Veach or somebody like that. You know, who knows? Definitely an opportunity for somebody like RJ Veach, a senior right now, to come in and bring some energy to this Greenup County team that looks kind of paralyzed right now. 23 13, 340 left. In the second quarter, Chillicothe on top. Atkins out to Underwood. Underwood pulls the trigger from three. No good. Rebound down to Stone King. Graham County eyes cold from the field. Stone King, good drive through the lane. He's going to be fouled on the ground. Mm, I think that's against Ethan Gibson. Number 55. Chillicothe going to inbound the basketball from underneath their own rim. Andrew Hammond, the freshman, inbounding it for the Cavaliers. Gets it to Stone King. Stone King drives. Good dish to Sism. He can't handle it. Saved inbound by Hannah Hammond right to Underwood. Here's Bradley Atkins all the way. Jump stop. Takes it up and puts it in. There we go. Caden Cox with the basketball for Chillicothe. Over to Daniel Sism. He'll take a three-pointer. No good. Rebound to Barron, though. Good strong rebound from Dom Barron, the junior, in his first two of the game. Yeah, nice position. Just held his ground right there. Went up and got it. Put it right back in. Adkins gets it down to Underwood on the block. Underwood kicks it out to Bradley Adkins. To Underwood. Underwood out top to Ethan Gibson for three. Misses that one, rebound tipped around, and uh, Hammond comes away with it and gives it to Cox, and here come the Cavaliers with a 10-point lead, and the ball, 223 and counting here left in this first half. Shilkoff is doing a good job right now, limiting Greenup County to one shot. Cox gets it to Sism, good pass to Barron, good kick out to the corner, open three-pointer for, let me catch that number, oh, that's Stone King that's again. Stone King. Another three for Cooper Stone King. 28-15 with two minutes left in the half. Here's Eli Atkins goes up, puts one in. 
They needed that basket at that point in time. They sure did. And Eli Atkins, the senior, leading scorer on this team. You'd expect it to come from him. There's Hammond. Brings it down and gives it to Cox on the right side. Drives the paint, and he's going to be called for a wall shuffle. There's six turnover. Greenup County's basketball down 11, 28 17, a minute 36 left here in the first half as uh, Harrington back into the game for Greenup. Gammon back in. Yeah, some of these threes are going to start falling for Greenup County. They haven't hit a three pointer yet. Gibby's 0 for 3, Gammon 0 for 2. They'll, 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 they're going to fall. Here's Gammon out top for the Musketeers on the dribble. Looking, looking, looking. Gives it to Harrington. Harrington takes off and drives, puts it up, misses. Rebound to Sism. That was a good move. Yeah, really good move. Second good move of the night by Harrington yeah, that he just hasn't finished. Right, you got to finish that. Here's Caden Cox for the Cavaliers out front being guarded by Eli Atkins. Cox, good pass on the baseline. As it moves over to Sism, he'll take a 15-footer. No good. Rebound. Tipped around. Hammond just takes it away from everybody. Wanted it a little bit more. That's it right there, Ryan. Freshman Hammond makes it 30-17. to 17. Here's Eli Atkins out top. Drives. Kicks it to Harrington. On the left side. Down to Eli Atkins. Atkins drives. And he he's going to be caught with the walk. Yep. Yeah. Only their third turnover. With that score, you know, down 13, that tells you right there, they're not, they're not hitting shots. Only three turnovers. No, 34 seconds and counting. I heard Coach Beer stand up and say one shot. He's determined to go to this uh, locker room at halftime with either a, uh, well, they're going to move the ball all the way down the baseline. Sism walks with it. So they don't get the one shot that he wanted. He's very frustrated on the sideline. But uh, 17 seconds to go. Here comes the cleanup. 30 to 17. Trailing by 13 right now. Casey Gammon out top. Gives it to Eli Adkins. Adkins drives the paint. Spins right into Sism. Blocked oh, shot wow. by Caden Cox. Three seconds. Sism up ahead to Stone King. Stone King gets the three off at the buzzer. Good! Cooper Stone King. Puts it in for three, right at the buzzer. 33 to 17, so we'll go to the- Uncle Rick, what are you doing? I'm dreaming. Of what? Fall on the bluegrass, days at the- Town TV. I've been a member for a little over 46 years. They're very family oriented. Um, you just walk in and everybody's friendly, they talk to you, you know, they know you by name. You know, you may not go in there for a, a day or, you know, several years, and I think you, you go in there and you still feel like family. Recently, we refinanced our home, and it felt like it was right because we trust the people that work there. This is my people. Wings, the deals don't stop. Buy one, get one half off Wing Tuesdays. Buy one, get one free bonus Thursdays. And three to six dollar happy hour deals from three to six p.m. every weekday. Only at Buffalo Wild Wings. struggle to concentrate. You don't understand why your mood swings and your energy is down. You're asking yourself why you have feelings of guilt, worthlessness, or even suicidal thoughts. Your mind is screaming, help. Pathways is listening. Call or chat with our crisis helpline now 
at pathways-ky.org. We're back here at Greenup County High School. It's halftime. The Greenup County Musketeers trail the Chillicothe Cavaliers by a score of 33 to 17. Pretty large halftime deficit, Brian. Yeah, I'm not something I wasn't expecting to see tonight for sure here, you know, being a home game and this, the way this team's played uh, earlier in the season, they played some, you know, basketball at a high level. They're not doing that tonight. This was not a high level performance so far in the first half. Uh, these guys know it. Um, I'm sure Coach Allison right now is really getting them on at, at halftime, you know, saying, hey, you can't come out and expect to win these games. You know, you got to go out there and earn them. You know, they're not just going to be given to you. And, and uh, you know, these players are, I'm sure, are going to realize that. I expect them to come out with a little more fire in the second half, a little more energy. And see if they can get back in this thing. I think they'll get back in this thing. Me, but, you know, who knows? This, this game probably went under the wire, I'd say. I think Coach Allison was definitely frustrated after last night's game uh, over in Wheelersburg where we lost 52-50, losing another close one that came down to the wire. And a game, you know, similar in some fashion to this where we just look kind of right. discombobulated and lost on offense. It uh, didn't look like we had any mission. Nobody was on a mission at all on offense right, last right. night, and it looks similar to that tonight. He did try to shake up the starting lineup a bit coming into tonight's game, starting Ethan Gibson and Gavin Harrington in place of the two seniors, Eli Atkins and Cohen Underwood. But uh, it hadn't lit a fire under the Musketeers just yet. No, and, and again, they're they're shooting. They're not. They're it's not. They're taking terrible shots. They're just. They're not. They're not falling. You know, they're not taking a, a huge high percentage shots. But again, the shots they're taking just aren't falling. And, I expect to see that, that you know turn around a little bit in the second half. They're going to start making some shots, and and uh, of course they're going to keep a keep a you know a hand in the face of, of Store King. He's he's lighting it up down there, man. Yeah, Cooper. Three threes. No no threes by the way for Game County in the first half. That's another uh, important uh, statistic you, you point out there. No three pointers, while Cooper Stone King has uh, three of them himself. That's a good Stone name. King, That's yeah. a good good basketball name. It well, is. good name for anything really. When you have the Stone King, yeah. you're pretty good. Cold Stone King Crab. <laughs> so. But yes, I mean, he's, like, he's 15 points. He's lined it up tonight for Shilakoff. He's got a great game. He's got a really, really quick release. It's interesting to watch him shoot. It is. Yeah, good player. And uh, Chillicothe, uh, you know, he's just a sophomore. Caden Cox, who looks pretty good tonight, too. He's a freshman. This is a young Chillicothe team, as we knew coming into the game. A lot of hope for Chillicothe in the future, and uh, a lot of hope for Chillicothe tonight in this one. As yeah, well, uh, yeah, you're right. Cox, he's been he's really impressed me tonight as a freshman. Eight points, five rebounds. He's he's played mm -hmm. a heck of a game and a block. Yeah. So we'll come right back here on the SOMC halftime show, give you some statistics, and uh, head into the second half. We're about five minutes until we get the second half underway. Better banking brings better opportunity. If you're looking for a loan, I encourage you to shop local. At Kentucky Farmers Bank, we make our decisions right here in our office. We give you the loans that you need and the personal service that you deserve. Kentucky Farmers Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. We take pride in our schools. And at King's Daughters, we take pride in being part of the team. With student athlete care from the sidelines to our comprehensive orthopedics program, with walk-in hours in Ashland and Portsmouth that make seeing a provider easier than ever. Our team is delivering faster diagnosis and treatment, getting our student athletes back in the game and back to what they do best. Orthopedics at King's Daughters. Alex Jewelers, and this uh, school season, we want to wish all of our local teams the, the best. We want you to know that we're here for you in any of your gift giving needs. And uh, good luck to everyone this fall and next spring.
We're back here at Greenwich County High School. I'm Ryan Parker along with Ryan Barber. And uh, let's go over some st st statistics in that first half. Uh, the leading scorer for Chillicothe was Cooper Stone King, as we said, three three-pointers and 15 points. Really good player, Cooper Stone King. And Caden Cox, uh, the second leading scorer, eight points for him. Cooper Stone King, a sophomore. Caden Cox, a freshman. And then they split the scoring across uh, several other Guys had two points apiece, uh, Daniel Sism, Cameron Badger, Dom Barron, Caden Eblen. So that was the scoring for Chillicothe in the first half and not really a whole lot of impressive scoring to speak of for the Musketeers in the first half. Cohen Underwood led with five, Chanley with four, Eli Atkins with four, and Bradley Atkins and Casey Gammon had two apiece. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the scoring looks good. As far as the balance goes, you got one, two, three, four, five, six guys scoring. But again, you know, you only got uh, 17 points to show for it. That's not going to get it done tonight. Uh, that's probably maybe their lowest first half total all season. Um, they just came out, you know, what can I say? You, you folks are watching the same game we are. They just come out lethargic, and uh, they've got they got to correct that. Come out with a little more pep in their step. That's for sure. they got to hustle. Get on the floor. Get to those loose balls. Somebody's got to give them a spark. Maybe to be a big Eli Atkins dunk or something. to give them that spark they need. So, again, they've, they've got the work cut out for them tonight. They've got to battle back. This is a team that can do that. We've seen glimpses of it all season, how good they can be when they, when they, when they catch on fire. We're going to need one of those times tonight to catch on fire. That's what's extra frustrating about this team, what we've seen from them so far this season in the first eight games. We know what they're capable of. You right, know. right. They have the ability to uh, be a, you know, one of the top teams in the 16th region this year. Right, right. But they're also capable of coming out and putting laying an egg like tonight so far. Right, right. <laughs> and, you know, going off of last night's game too, coming off of that, you know, you wonder if, just how tired these guys are. Where's the energy energy level at? You know, they got to get that energy level up. And I just don't, we don't see it tonight. Haven't seen it all night tonight. Yeah, it was a really hostile environment last night. And I think I used this analogy last night. I talked about Greenup County being like the undertaker at sometimes, uh, you know, they knock him down on the mat and he has to just sit right up all of a sudden and start fighting back. And that's kind of what they did last night. They started fighting back. Right. I guess I'll use Tyson Fury tonight. He's another guy. You know, you knock yeah. him down. And boom, you know, the nine count, he just sits right up and he's ready to fight. So we hope the Musketeers, it, it may be time for them to sit up and be ready to fight. Yeah, you know, maybe that three-pointer instead of giving Chilicothe a moment, maybe that, you know, give us a moment. Like that, maybe that woke him up right there going into half. We certainly hope so. About 20 seconds until we get this second half underway. 33 to 17, the Chillicothe Cavaliers trying to get their second win on the season. And this would be a big win for them, I would believe, coming over here to Greenup County. Uh, uh, well, how far is Chillicothe? About an hour from here? About an hour, yeah. An hour, yeah. An hour and ten minutes north mm -hmm. of here. Just. Yeah, so they've made the trip down 23 tonight and hoping to go home with a win. They'll have the basketball starting this second half. Ross Oop. County. Is that where Chillicothe is? Ross County, yes, sir. Need paper. Caden Cox with the basketball out front. Greenham County and man-to-man -man defense. Cooper Stone King with it. Chillicothe changes up the lineup uh, to start this half. They have Daniel Sism in there. Three-pointer from the far side by Caden Cox. Sism comes through immediately. Good rebound into Hammond. Hammond puts it in. Mm. The freshman, Andrew Hammond, scores the first two of the half and gives Chillicothe an 18-point lead. Got to rebound the ball. There's Gammon with it. Out to Bradley Adkins. Adkins fakes. Out to Bryson Chanley. Chanley drives the lane, goes up, blocked away by Caden Cox, and Hammond comes up with it. Here comes Cox, the 6'3 freshman, down the floor. Hammond feeling it now, and he nails it. Wow. Andrew Hammond puts Chillicothe up 21, 38-17. Gammon gets Greenup County on the board in the half. 38-19. Time for the Musketeers to start showing some resolve here, Brian. Right, right. They're in the danger zone right now. They just stop right here. You might see them come out, extend that zone out a little bit, put some pressure on, maybe do a little trap. Hammond ready for it again right in front of the bench. I thought he was going to let it go. Oh, I did too. Drives the baseline, gets tied, tied up. up. Yeah, it's going to be a jump ball. Nope, they're going to say Chillicothe got the timeout. Coach Patrick Beard. Uh, called the timeout, 30-second timeout, so we'll stay right here. 
Again, quick start out of the gate for Chilla Coffee. Uh, and for Coach Beard, you got to be happy with that. For Coach Allison, you got to be just beside yourself. Yeah, looking for that moment in the game where uh, Greenup County shows some fire, passion, desire, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you know, uh, decisiveness. I've called it a lot of things. I, I used every decisiveness, yeah. everything in the book last night. I uh, was <laughs> looking for. You know, I'm looking for them right. to be the hammer rather than the nail. Right. Uh, I, I feel look, like they're the nail right now. Yeah, I'm looking for something <laughs> maybe out of Underwood or Gibson. Maybe give you a come in here and give us a big three. So far, his shots haven't been falling tonight, but they're, they're going to go. Just got to keep shooting out of it. 6.24 remaining here in the third quarter. Sheila Coffey with the basketball underneath her own basket. It's uh, Caden Eblen doing the duties inbounding for Chillicothe. Out to Hammond in the corner, open three. He passes it up, gives it to Stone King. Good pass by Stone King. Down to Cox for two. Give Cox double figures tonight now with 10. 40 to 19, a 21 point lead for Chillicothe. Ethan Gibson way out front for Greenup County. Time for the Musketeers to get to moving guys. Casey Gammon takes the long three, no good. Rebound to Bradley Atkins. Drives it to the rim, lays it in. Good job by Bradley Atkins, showing a little bit of aggression there. Got his fifth rebound, too, right there, and able to put it back up and in. Nice move. 40 21. Here's Stone King. Good pass over to Hammond. Three pointer, no good. Rebound, though, pulled down by Stone King. He lays it up and in. You can't have that happen right there. You know, Got to have more hustle than that on the boards for, for the Musketeers. The lead is 21 again. Here's Gammon over to Chanley. Right side to Bradley Adkins. Adkins on the dribble, throws it away. Hammond comes away with it. Adkins fighting for it, but uh, it's out of bounds. going to go the way of Chillicothe, it looks like. Eli Adkins coming into the game now for Gibby. And Cohen Underwood as well into the game for Harrington. So. The typical starting five is in for the Musketeers, down 21. 5.14 left here in the third quarter. Can Greenup County mount yet another one of their comebacks? We're going to find out. Hammond to Stone King. Stone King puts down some dribbles. It's caught in the right corner out front to Caden Cox. Chillicothe being patient here, as they have the time to be patient, up 21. Stone King, open three, right corner off the side of the backboard. Underwood comes up with it. Come on, guys, let's go. Here's Casey Gammon on down the floor to Eli Adkins. Adkins out to Gammon to Underwood, top of the key. Underwood looking for Chanley in the paint. Underwood go. drives, kicks it out to Chanley. Chanley, 15-footer. Good. Good job by Bryson Chanley. He has the form from there. I'd like to see him pull the trigger a bit more from that range. That's right. Here's Stone King across the floor to Caden Cox. The lead's under 20 right now. Andrew Hammond, let's keep it under 20. Cox with the basketball. Greenup County in the zone right now, looking for some traps. Hammond for three out of the corner. That wow. ends the zone right there. Yep. Andrew Hammond, his second three-pointer of the third quarter. Five threes on the night for them and zero for us. Underwood out top, just uh, dribbling. Is it to Eli Adkins? It's a screen, Adkins looking through the paint. Adkins takes it to the rim hard, misses the layup, but Underwood is there to clean things up. Two points for Greenup, 45-25, a 20-point lead now for Chillicothe. Stone King bringing it down the floor for the Cavaliers. Goes to Caden Cox. Cox out to Stone King. Down in the corner to Eblen. Across to Cox, there's Hammond again, the hot shooter, puts another one up and in. Andrew Hammond has filled it up. Here in the second half. Wow. 48-25. 3-16 and counting. On the clock. In the third quarter, Gammon drives. Gives it to Chanley. Chanley puts it on the ground. Goes through the lane. Puts it up. Misses. Rebound down to Hammond. He's doing everything right now for Chillicothe. Stone King with it out front. 23-point lead for the Cavaliers. Hammond in the corner. Gammon covers him up this time. Gets it out to Cox. There's Stone King. He's left open on the right side. He chooses not to take the three. Dribbling out front. Cooper Stone King finds Caden Cox on the baseline. He'll pass up the jumper. 
Not his game. He tries a fancy pass behind the back. They get it out to Eli Atkins. Maybe this is what they need, a jam from Eli Atkins. 48-27. On his sixth point. There we go. Let's get it going, boys. That's how many Eli had last night against Wheelersburg. Six points. 48-27. Here's Cox. Behind the back dribble, drives the paint, puts it up left hand. Pretty wow. move from Caden Cox. That was a pretty move. That's all you can say right there. Tell you what, Chillicothe, they've gained some confidence early against Greenham, and they've gotten better as the night's gone on. You sold my thought. I was thinking the same thing. They're playing with the confidence right now. Yeah, it's a good-looking Chillicothe team right now. You're right. Way different than what they started with. They bring in Juan Miller and uh, Cameron Badger into the game. Looks like Dom Barron in as well. They're going to leave the hot hand of uh, Andrew Hammond in the game, the freshman who has torched Greenup County for three three-pointers here in this third quarter. Yeah, you can't take him out. No way. Miller over to Badger. Badger, oh, just a look off and lays it in. How about that? Cameron Badger comes in ready to score as well, 52-27. Eli Adkins over to Underwood to Chanley in the middle of the lane. Chanley just squares up, puts it down a couple dribbles, spin move, puts it up and in. Greenham County has put, uh, let's see, well, we got 12 points on the board this quarter, but uh, you got to play some defense That's as well. Right. If it, you know, a couple threes here, it really hurt us. Cox trapped out front, gives it to Barron. Barron goes down low to Hammond. Hammond's on fire. He puts another one in. Hammond's gone into video game mode right now. Sure has. 15 for him. Here's Eli Adkins drives the lane, puts it up. He's fouled, cannot finish. Adkins will go to the line for two shots. And the foul didn't catch. Did you catch the number on that foul, Brian? Nope. I didn't catch it. I couldn't, I, I couldn't hear the public address. No, I couldn't either. <laughs> yeah. Eli Atkins for two shots from the line. The first one's up and in. The lead is well, 54 to 30, I thought. Yeah, 54-30. They put the 30th point on the board now. 24-point lead for Chillicothe with 56 seconds left here in the quarter. Atkins makes the second one, 54-31. Need to stop in a bucket here, bad. Miller finds Hammond down the floor. Hammond goes to the two bounce pass over in the corner to Badger. Down to Barron on the baseline. Barron drives, puts up a reverse, no good. Underwood rebounds the ball. Come on, Greenup, here we go. Underwood down the floor. All the way, Cohen Underwood, strong move to the goal. Cannot finish it off, gets the blocking oh. foul on Dom Barron. Just can't get them shots to fall tonight, man. Yeah, I thought the three days off uh, right yeah. before the Wheelersburg game would do Green up some Me good. Too. It was the first time this year that we had gotten real time off like that. You're but right. uh, maybe we were just on a roll and used to playing. Uh, we come off those three days awfully, awfully cold. Cohen Underwood misses the first free throw. Second free throw is out of there as well. Barron rebounds, tears it away from Bradley Adkins. Almost a walk there. A little shove going on there. Yeah, a couple shoves up the floor. Badger over to Juan Miller. Miller to Barron. There's a foul on Cohen Underwood. Yep. Only the uh, first foul of this quarter. So, or second foul of the quarter on Greenup. So, just two fouls on Chillicothe this quarter. Two fouls on Greenup. So, no, pretty clean quarter. 15 ticks to go here. McNeil into Juan Miller. Miller over the timeline. On the dribble. Miller will just pull up, take it from three. Why not? Dom Barron rebounds, throws it up, and almost in there. Wow. As it spun around and out on Dom Barron at wow. the buzzer. As the third quarter expires, Chillicothe has a 23-point lead, 54-31 to 31 here from the greenhouse. We'll be right back here on My Town TV. We're not changing what we do every day. We're there to help people. Every growth number that we have is another person that we helped. People out in the world today need help, and that's what we're there for. 
visit the Ashland Boyd County Health Department to catch up on routine childhood vaccines such as MMR, Tdap, HPV, and hepatitis. Please call 606-324-7181 to schedule an appointment. We're back here at the greenhouse. Eight minutes to go. Greenup County has a 23-point deficit to, wow. try to, to try to mountain to climb. Yeah, it's a big mountain to climb. They get their work cut out for them. We're going to have to really play with some emergency now. We have seen behind the eight ball. Yeah, we've seen Greenup County in every game this season. They've trailed. Uh, they've come back and uh, fought back and. Made it a game at the end, but boy, do they ever have their work cut out for them here. Do they have one quarter of high energy basketball in them? Underwood on the near side. Got to go ahead and pull the trigger on some of these. Right. Underwood gets it in. Well, that ball's knocked. Uh, did it? Nope. He just threw it completely over the head of everybody and out of bounds. Oh, well. Not how you want to start a comeback. Nope. Maybe you should have shot that three. Yeah, you gotta, we're just reluctant to pull the trigger all of a sudden. <laughs> There's Hammond in the corner to McNeil. McNeil gets it back to Badger, taken away by Underwood. Now go and get a shot up. Underwood to Gammon, takes it to the pole, misses the layup. Wow. Everything that can go wrong is going wrong at this point. Yep, you're right. Sism rebounded and Juan Miller has it out front for Chillicothe in a 23 point commanding lead for the Cavaliers. Here's Bradley Atkins with a steal. Let's see if he can finish it off. He does. I love 50, his aggression. He, 50, he always plays with some, some aggression. Yeah, 54-33. And aggression is the word. We've got to see the Musketeers start playing with more aggression. Badger will fall away too good. Six in the night for Badger. Leads back to 23. Here's Eli Atkins out to Chanley. Chandley moving on the left side, drives toward the paint, goes up and in. Now we gotta get a stop here. Got to get a stop. 56-35, Greenup County trying to apply some pressure in the backcourt now. Juan Miller throwing it over to McNeil on the near side. They're trapped over there. Yeah. Eli Atkins gets it. Bradley Atkins picks it up and out of there. Atkins moves toward the goal, throws up a reverse. No oh. good, but he's fouled by Juan Miller, and Bradley will go to the line for two shots. That's what's needed right there. Another hustle play for Miller. Yeah, and any uh, points we can get with the clock stopped here, down 21 is a good thing. That's huge, you're right, good point. Atkins' first free throw is high, arcing and off the backboard and the back of the rim. Musketeers still having problems with their free throws. Five of 12. Atkins tries it again. That one drops through. And the lead is now 20, 56-36, 6.24 left. Caden Cox gets it up to Barron. Barron, long looping pass over to, well, Stone King has, hey, took the charge. Bryce, oh, oh, tough call there. Bryson Chanley tried to take the charge and gets the block call instead. Yep, yeah, that was tough. That'll send Pretty Stone King to the line. First free throw is good. 57-36. Only three points this half for Stone King after 15 to first. Second free throw is good. Lead is 22, here's Underwood, and Bradley Atkins on the right side. It's out to Eli Take Atkins. It, Eli. To Chanley. 
Shanley falls away, gets the game. And it's like nobody wants to take it at this point, Brian. That's what I saw last night. I'm, I don't, and we're down 22 points. Shanley puts it up and in. Eight points is half, giving 10 for the game for Chanley. 58-38, long pass down the floor. Barron retrieves it. Barron gets it out front. Chanley putting some pressure out front on Caden Cox. Tips it away. Cox tries to throw it down. Eli Akis comes oh, in. Oh, oh, absolutely held back by Dom Barron. It could be an intentional. We'll it see. could have been an intentional foul that time. Yeah, certainly could have been. As Barron just reached out and grabbed him intentionally to try to slow him down because he knew he had the steal and was headed the other way. But they'll just call the common foul, and it'll be Eli Atkins inbounding the basketball. Down 20, 5.28 to go in front of the scorer's table. I don't know what an intentional foul is anymore. <laughs> Here's Gammon with the basketball. Up top, gives it to Eli Atkins. Over to Underwood, launches the three. No good. Rebound tipped around. Uh, Kicked our ball. Okay, we'll take it. Now we had a foul call underneath there. They're going to call a foul on Stone King, I believe. Greenup County's basketball down 20. 514 left in this one. Cooper or uh, Cohen Underwood. Going to bring the ball in from underneath the Greenup County basket. Underwood throws it way into the backcourt. Casey Gammon retrieves it. Has to bring it all the way up now with Stone King guarding him, but he backs off. Gammon over the timeline. Gammon, good, good aggressive drive to the basket. Yeah, I'll take that. Draws the foul on Stone King, and Gammon will go to the line for two shots. Now, if the clock stops, you got to make these two, young man. You're due. You got these. Casey Gammon's first free throw is in there. 58-39 is our score from the greenhouse. Second free throw is good. Full timeout cool. for Chillicothe. Okay. So we'll take the break with them. It's 58-40, Chillicothe on top of Green up here tonight on My Town TV. I've been a member for a little over 46 years. They're very family oriented. Um, you just walk in and everybody's friendly, they talk to you, you know, they know you by name. You know, you may not go in there for a day or, you know, several years, and I think you, you go in there and you still feel like family. Recently, we refinanced our home, and it felt like it was right because we trust the people that work there. This is my people. We're back here in Lloyd, Kentucky, where Chillicothe leads Greenup County 58 to 40. Five minutes and five seconds left in this ball game. And I'll tell you what, that's a long five minutes for, for us fans out here who are sitting on the edge of our seat, hoping for some kind of a comeback, but it looks like it's slipping away from us. We, we mentioned during the break that Greenup County's not a team ideally built for a comeback. Remember, we're not gonna see a, you know, a barrage of threes, maybe, but you know, that's what you gotta have. Well, this short of time span, we know we fell behind 31-3 early in the game to Mason County, so we right. had the entire game to come back. Right. But, uh, you know, we have to make up 18 points in a short period of time. There's a turnover. Casey Gammon comes up. And now we turn it right back over. Gammon, oh, no, no, Gammon blocks wow, it out. Wait. Okay, we got the ball. A little hot potato there, Gammon man. finds Chanley wide open underneath. That helps. Bryson Chanley for two, 58-42. There's another turnover. Cohen Underwood out top. Hit a three, guys. Chanley takes it to the rim, goes up strong, gets oh. fouled, and cannot finish that. Oh, that's been the, the thing all night. They can't finish. They oh. just can't get that better lid on the basket. Needed that and one. Some substitutes going to come into the game for Chillicothe immediately. It's Juan Miller and Cameron Badger over there waiting to come in. It's going to be two free throws for Bryson Chanley at the line, so you got to hit your free throws. Chanley puts down some dribbles and puts it up and falls off. <laughs> you look over at Coach Allison. I, 
I saw that look on his face last night. I mean, he doesn't recognize this team that's on the floor right now. Yeah, some, don't, yeah some of us don't. <laughs> it's like uh, this isn't what we saw at the initial part of the season. Chanley's second free throw is good. So it's 58-43. The lead's cut to 15. Greenup County still applying the pressure. Caden Cox in the backcourt throws it up the floor. Ooh. Eli Atkins guarding Stone King. They trap Stone King. Gets it across to Miller, though, and Miller will back it out now. 4.30 remaining in the game. Miller takes a runner, 10-footer. No good off the board. Eli Atkins rebounds, and here comes the Musketeers. Eli Atkins on the dribble. Behind the back dribble out to Gammon for, oh, did not pull the trigger on that three. Takes it in back out to Eli Atkins. Got to move the ball, fellas. 15-footer for Atkins. Good. That's his shot. 58-45. The lead is now 13. Here comes Juan Miller up the sideline. Miller throws a long cross-court pass over to Caden Cox. It's in safe territory now. Cox has a good handle on it, and it's a foul out front. Foul out front on Casey Gammon. Let's see it. Let it really Long before the, the drive. Sure, okay. Got a text here from our buddy Sean Boggs, Brian. He said we need a stone king on our football team. There you go. Be a good name with Waylon and Caden Holmes and Stone King. Sounds like a linebacker. It sure does. <laughs> so, yeah, middle linebacker right there. Eli Atkins commits the foul there on the Musketeers. Stone King with the basketball. Bradley Atkins guarding him. Right side to Badger, and Chillicothe's going to be content to slow this thing down, I would think, some now with a 13-point lead. Yeah, you got to get up in their face here as Allison... Coach Allison tells Bryson Chanley. Ooh. Gets it out to Miller. Miller, Gammon trying to guard Miller. No, tipped away by Gammon, but they call the foul. A little reach around there from Gammon. I believe that's Casey's fourth foul, if I'm correct in my so I got him for stat four. keeping. You don't want to lose Gammon in his possible three-point shooting here. Oh, they throw that one up for grabs. We didn't see it coming, but Juan Miller retrieves it. Got lucky it, right there. Yep, gives it to Caden Cox over the timeline. Cox moving it to the near side. Chanley, good defense on him. Making him work for it. Tipped away by Gammon. Stolen away by Gammon. And here comes the Musketeers with the basketball again. Now they're playing with that urgency. Now the urgency we're seeing. Yeah, Adkins out top. Gives it down to Chanley in the lane. Goes up strong. Oh, and a charge called on Bryson Chanley. Yep. You call that every time. Little Oscar... Yeah, no, Oscar yeah. goes down there. Yeah, Oscar goes to uh, Cox there on that one. Yeah, you, you well, you leave yourself, uh, you know, no room for error really when you get behind 20 some points. So one bad call or one questionable call, and right. There's a tipped up the floor. Oh, off his foot. Ooh. Did look like it went off the Stone King's foot, but. Uh, wow. That went off Stone King's foot. Well, right off there. Going to be a timeout called by Coach Corey Allison. Going to be a full timeout, so we'll take the break with him. 3.05 remaining in the ballgame, 58-45. Chillicothe leads here from the greenhouse on My Town TV. Finally, all your favorite holiday songs about impaired driving in one place. Introducing the Drive Sober or Get Pulled Over Holiday Collection. Here's what you get. Silent Night in Jail. Here comes Johnny Law. The 12 Days of Jail Time. Go tell it in a courtroom. Joy to the world. You plan to ride. A way to make danger. Oh, drive all ye sober. And many more. Act now to get this amazing collection. But more importantly, get a ride. Even if you think you're only a little buzzed. Better banking brings better opportunity. If you're looking for a loan, I encourage you to shop local. At Kentucky Farmers Bank, we make our decisions right here in our office. We give you the loans that you need and the personal service that you deserve. Kentucky Farmers Bank, member FDIC. We're back here at the greenhouse. Just uh, saw a good performance there from the Greenup County cheerleaders who will be headed to the Nationals in Florida yep. uh, very soon. Good showing, good showing once again the state. And Kentucky is a state full of talent when it comes to cheerleading. Chillicothe has the ball, 13-point lead, 3.05 remaining. Juan Miller with it in the backcourt, content to be very patient now. Bradley Adkins guarding Miller. He drives to the paint, 10-footer goes up, and Miller retrieves his own ball there. That was big. Wow. Out to Stone King. Musketeers needed to get on that one. R.J. Veach into the game for some hustle. 
Gotta be careful with Stone King there. Oh, take it away. That is Veach with the with the steal. Oh, and Underwood can't hang on to it. Oh, they come out of there. We got another new player in the game. That's Hunter Holbrook in the game. Holbrook needs to Shoot let that it. three go, young man. Is it to Eli Adkins out top? Adkins crosses him over, goes to the paint, goes up and in. Good Eli time. Adkins. That was all determination right there. 58-47 now the score. Stone King almost came down on the balls on the floor. No Musketeer got on the floor with it. But timeout, Pat Beard. Ooh. You're right. It could have been a walk there. I was looking for a Musketeer to dive on the floor for that when it's a full timeout. So we'll take another timeout with him here. 2.15 left, 58-47. Chillicothe leads on My Town TV. We take pride in our schools. And at King's Daughters, we take pride in being part of the team. With student-athlete care from the sidelines to our comprehensive orthopedics program. With walk-in hours in Ashland and Portsmouth that make seeing a provider easier than ever. Our team is delivering faster diagnosis and treatment, getting our student-athletes back in the game and back to what they do best. Orthopedics at King's Daughters. Hi, I'm Clay with Pollock Strollers, and this uh, school season we want to wish all of our local teams the, the best. We want you to know that we're here for you in any of your gift giving needs. And uh, good luck to everyone this fall and next spring. We're back here at Greenup County High School, Chillicothe 58, Greenup County 47, 215 remaining in the ball game. One of those nights, Ryan, where you just can't get the ball to bounce your way. Cooper Stone King inbounds the ball to Juan Miller, being guarded by Casey Gaiman. Miller brings it over the timeline. He's going to be trapped. Up, nope, they're just going to switch off. Bradley Addison's going to take him now. Got to start a count out here. I don't know. The referee Ooh. not counting at all. Stone King way out front with the ball again. Now he's counting. Gaiman with it. Oh, Almost tipped man. away. And tipped away by Eli Atkins, but nobody looking. Nobody was on the ball. Across they go to Juan Miller. 146 left in this one, and Greenup County going to have to start fouling if they're not going to be able to create enough pressure yeah. to generate a steal. Juan Miller with it. Miller down the baseline to Stone King. He goes up and in. Yep, you go all that time right there and then give up that. That's, that's tough. 60-47. It's three-point time now, guys. Bradley Atkins in the corner. Drives, spins. Needs to get rid of it. Is it to Chanley? Got to kick it out of there for a three. Chanley off the board, no good. Atkins tips it up, no good. Rebound down to a Badger. Badger gets it. Yeah, and Badger's fouled in the backcourt, it looks like. So Badger will, nope, they're going to call a jump ball. It, it, possession goes to Chillicothe, though. 60 to 47, Chillicothe in the lead, in command here. One minute and 11 seconds remaining in the game. Here comes Hunter Holbrook back into the game for the Musketeers, checking in for Casey Gammon. Well, if we had five quarters, we'd be in this thing. <laughs> just not enough time. Stone King inbounds the ball to Cox, and he puts it on the ground, goes up. Oh, I thought Adkins could have got to that one. Did not do so, though. Ahead they go to Barron. He's up for two. Nice job by Chillicothe on that one. 62-47, 15-point lead. And the Musketeers, they 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 got to launch the threes here, guys. Uh, uh, you know, Bradley Atkins does so. He misses. Rebound to Cox. Cox up ahead to Stone King. Down the floor, they find Barron again, and Barron lays it in again. Yep, had to do it there. 64-47. The lead is back out to 17. 35 seconds remaining. Bradley Atkins, right corner, drives the baseline, throws it up. No good. Rebound down to Stone King. Atkins hustling in there, gets it out of there. As Badger. Oh, Atkins said or something. Badger and Atkins getting in each other's face, and Atkins gets the technical foul and heads over to the bench. I'm sure he's very frustrated with his and the Musketeers' performance this evening. Badger was trying to call the tee. Yeah. I'm not sure what was said or, or done, but nonetheless. Badger will go to the line to take the shots himself. First one's no good. Oh. 
Badger's second free throw is no good. Harrington checks into the game for Bradley Atkins, who uh, leaves uh, very frustrated. As all of us are, really. 27 right. seconds left in this one. Green up down by 17. Cox gets it into Miller. Not sure if the green up will even foul at this point. 23 seconds. Miller. Nope, taken right away by Eli Atkins, but the foul is called by uh, its own Hunter Holbrook. That'll send Juan Miller to the line for two shots. He hasn't scored tonight. His first chance to get in the scoring column no, for Chilla Coffee. And a chance to nearly extend this margin out to about 20 points. Miller's free throw is good. He kind of cut to 11, had a chance to cut to nine and couldn't do it. And then that's been all Chillicothe since then. I'm sure Coach uh, Pat Beard and Chillicothe, they want to take the confidence that they seem to gain as this game went on, on with them throughout their season and play, you know, with this freedom and uh, confidence that they've played with tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's been very well balanced. Atkins misses another one. Uh, that one's rebounded out by Caden Cox. It's knocked away, and a foul's going to be called on Greenup County. With seven seconds left, Caden Cox will go to the line. Doesn't really matter who it's on at this point. Uh, Cox goes to the line for two shots. Seven seconds left in this one. Yeah, Coach Beer has got to be you know, just elated to escape with this kind of win here tonight. On the road at Greenup County, at the greenhouse, tough environment, and gets a really solid team. Yeah, great performance for Chillicothe tonight. As Caden Cox puts the first free throw in. And like you said, I was thinking the same thing. They got better as the night went on. Yeah, this is truly a, a game where you saw the team get better before our eyes as the right. night went on. As Cox's second free throw is good. 68-47 here at Greenup County bringing it down. They're just going to dribble it out. Bryce and Chanley. Then with this one, 68-47, our final score here from the greenhouse. Chillicothe is your winner tonight. We'll be right back with the SOMC postgame show on My Town TV. I've been a member for a little over 46 years. They're very family oriented. Um, you just walk in and everybody's friendly. They talk to you, you know, they know you by name. You know, you may not go in there for a day or you know, several years and I think you, you go in there and you still feel like family. Recently, we refinanced our home and it felt like it was right because we trust the people that work there. This is my people. The deals don't stop. Buy one, get one half off Wing Tuesdays. Buy one, get one free bonus Thursdays. And three to six dollar happy hour deals from three to six p.m. every weekday. Only at Buffalo Wild Wings. to concentrate. You don't understand why your mood swings and your energy is down. You're asking yourself why you have feelings of guilt, worthlessness, or even suicidal thoughts. Your mind is screaming, help. Pathways is listening. Call or chat with our crisis helpline now at pathways-ky.org. We're back here from Greenup County High School where the Chillicothe Cavaliers have come to Greenup and put a whooping on the Musketeers tonight, Brian, 68-47. to 47. Yeah, very surprising uh, win for Chillicothe on the road. A great win for Coach Beard. He's excited. As I mentioned, he's got to be elated to leave this gym with a 
with a big, big win. His team got a lot of confidence tonight. Like you said, we both could see it. I mean, as anybody else could, this team got better as the night went on. And unfortunately, Graham County didn't. They didn't. They didn't master intensity as the game went on. And unfortunately, that cost them a game tonight. Yeah, and Chillicothe has to be happy too. They had some big production from uh, some young players tonight. Cooper Stone King was the leading scorer with 21 points. Uh, he uh, nailed three threes in the first half, and Andrew Hammond had 15 points. He's a freshman. He had three threes in the second half. Right, yeah, big performance for him in the second half. Also did a great job rebounding the ball, along with Cox. Cox almost had a double-double. I got him a rebound shy you know, with 14 points, nine rebounds. So Cox, a great night. Yeah, another freshman, Caden Cox. So, you know, the three leading scorers for Chillicothe tonight was a sophomore and two freshmen, so the future is very bright. Oh, yeah, you got you to admit, that, that, that's scary. Yeah, Chillicothe basketball is going to be pretty good here uh, in a couple of years. Caden Cox had 14 on the night. Uh, rounding out the rest of the scoring, Dom Barron had six. Cameron Badger had six. And then two apiece for Daniel Sism, Caden Eblen, and Juan Miller. For Greenup County, the leading scorer tonight was Bryson Chanley. He had 15 points, three of six from the line. Uh, seven points apiece for Bradley Atkins and Cohen Underwood. Eli Atkins had 12 points. And Casey Gaiman had six. Yeah, so yeah, you got to have better production than that. Just another lackluster night here. I'm not, I'm not sure what about any of our boys tonight, but you know, they're a better team than that. And on paper, they're a better team than that. And I thought this would be a chill all these team. We could have won, should have won. And we let one get away from us here tonight. But hopefully we'll bounce back in a couple of days and, and be, on, be on form. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, Greenup County returns to action on Friday night where it's a girl-boy doubleheader down at Estill County in the 2A tournament. Uh, and then Saturday, both teams come back here to the greenhouse to play. Uh, not necessarily a girl boy double header that, that day. Uh, Greenup County girls play at 4.30 here in the afternoon uh, against the East Carter Lady Raiders. And then the Greenup County boys play here. That's the next one we'll have for you here on My Town TV. Saturday night, Greenup County's boys play the Rock Hill Redmen. So uh, Greenup County hopes to rebound from this. Coach Corey Allison looking for answers right now. Final score tonight, uh, Brian, uh, 68-47, Chillicothe. Well, I'm, I'm ready for the weekend. We'll come back. We'll bounce back. We'll get, we'll get the next two. We'll get them. We'll get them. So thanks to Grant Sutherland on production and uh, Marcus Reed on the camera. Great work by those guys every time out. Uh, Brian Barber on color. Glad you felt good enough to come tonight, Brian. Uh, sorry we couldn't see a Musketeer victory. Yeah, we'll get them next time. I just got to go game by game. Keep, you know, uh, the main thing is get this team ready for March, and I think, I think Coach Allison will have this team ready for March. All right, I'm Ryan Parker. Thank you for joining us tonight. Good evening, everyone. See you next time. Better banking brings better opportunity. If you're looking for a loan, I encourage you to shop local. At Kentucky Farmers Bank, we make our decisions right here in our office. We give you the loans that you need and the personal service that you deserve. Kentucky Farmers Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. We take pride in our schools. And at King's Daughters, we take pride in being part of the team. With student-athlete care from the sidelines to our comprehensive orthopedics program. With walk-in hours in Ashland and Portsmouth that make seeing a provider easier than ever. Our team is delivering faster diagnosis and treatment, getting our student-athletes back in the game and back to what they do best. Orthopedics at King's Daughters. Jewelers. In this uh, school season, we want to wish all of our local teams the, the best. We want you to know that we're here for you in any of your gift-giving needs. And uh, good luck to everyone this fall and next spring.